Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Angling and Arrows. Today we're going to continue our series on the Ford Maverick 2.5 liter four-cylinder hybrid vehicle. It's a front-wheel drive. It's a little truck that I just recently heard referred to as a trucklet. I thought that was hilarious, so I might just steal it. Anyway, I recently traded in my F-150 just due to the rising cast of fuel and stuff. So I'm giving this one a try so that we can do a few more hunting and fishing adventures, which we feature on our channel here as well. But on today's episode, I'm going to go over some of the technology in the uh, Ford Maverick Hybrid here. There's a few features in the truck that I'm sure a lot of people aren't aware of, and I've had a few days now to play with it and figure out how to use some of them. So we're going to whack through the technology that's available when you're sitting in the driver's seat, from everything from pairing your cell phone to using the radio, and there is a very important thing in here that you have to make sure you stay tuned to watch if you own one of these or are thinking about buying one. One of the questions I've heard a lot of is how do you know if your vehicle is running on gas or electric? There is a gauge in the truck that gives you some indication of your battery usage, but it doesn't tell you exactly how much fuel you're using in conjunction with the battery power. But there is a way you can adjust the settings in the truck on your console gauge in the dashboard that will show you exactly that information as to how much fuel you're using. So make sure you stay tuned and watch that. And I'd also like to mention that a lot of viewers are tuning into my channel for some of these Ford Maverick videos, as well as a lot of our hunting and fishing videos, and a large number are not subscribed. So hopefully if you like the content, you'll remember to do that now. Subscribe and hit the notification button to receive some more upcoming videos on the Ford Maverick. It really helps out the analytics of our channel and uh, promotes our videos on YouTube, which is very important. And you never know, maybe if we get enough likes and subscriptions here that when the all-new Ford Maverick Hybrid all-wheel drive comes out, which they're expecting sometime in the next couple of years, maybe my dealer will put me on the shortlist because they're going to be very hard to get. But we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned. So I've had the Ford Maverick Hybrid for a few days now, and I have familiarized myself with some of the technology that you can access here when you're sitting in the driver's seat. So I'm going to run through a quick vehicle setup here now and explain what some of the controls and gauges do here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, pairing my mobile device, which is a Samsung uh, phone. Pretty standard procedure, but I'm going to run through the process. So the first thing you have to do is download the Ford Connect app on your phone. So all you have to do is go in and search for Ford Connect app. Go to the one for Google Play Store, Ford Pass, right here. It's the one we use in Canada. And it says uninstall and open because I've already downloaded it to save some time. So once you have that installed, you can go back and pair your phone. So I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there talking about the Ford Pass app. You don't have to download that to pair your phone to the vehicle, but now that I did mention it, I will show you what it's all about. I downloaded it, so we'll click on it. So what this is, is an app that gives you some remote control features to your vehicle, such as auto start and stop using the cell service. You can check out your vehicle here on the home screen. It gives you all kinds of information. This is stuff that I've already downloaded because I have my vehicle registered with the app. It gives you some status features on your vehicle, tire pressure monitoring, tell you where to, <clears throat> you can go online and book your next service date with this. It's a fantastic app and it's a great thing that's included with, uh, I believe, all Ford vehicles now. So once you download the app, as I showed you, all you have to do to use it and pair it with your vehicle is you go up top, click add a vehicle, and you'll be given the VIN number to your vehicle when you buy it. So you can just record your VIN number there or scan the barcode that comes with the vehicle. And once that's done, you just follow the directions and your vehicle will be paired super easy. So I'm going to open up my settings, settings, connections, Bluetooth, and then go to the home screen on the truck right here. Pair of Search device. for Ford Maverick on your device and select Ford Maverick once it is found. So back on the phone here, Ford Maverick is found. Confirm that the pin displayed on Ford audio matches the pin displayed on your device. So compare the two pin numbers to make sure they're the same. That way it confirms that it is the same. 
and hit pair. Then you grant permissions to your vehicle. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions while your vehicle is in motion. There you go, simple as that. The phone is connected and ready to be used. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen and I'm gonna walk through all the controls that are available on this. Uh, your phone is here. Right here, we'll start with the audio controls. This is your basic radio controls. All of your preset channels are right here. If you choose to add your own preset, you just go to your tuning button right here and you can select whatever channel you want. To save that in the preset, just select one of your preset buttons, hold it in, and that preset is now saved. You can do that for all of your, all of your uh, stations you wish to save. The next one you have here is your phone. These are all the basic commands for your phone. You can go into each one, it'll give you your recent call list. If you want to download them from your phone, you have your contacts, downloading, Galaxy, voice assistant, so all this is just basic phone stuff. You can select the keypad to make a phone call. So basically it just transfers your phone to the eight inch touch screen in your truck. The next setting you have down here is your app screen. So you can download apps on your phone that you can use on your eight inch touch screen, such as Google Maps is one that's commonly used. And then over here you have settings. You have your sound control for your radio. You can select your sound uh, settings that you like for your bass, treble, balance and fade. Uh, these vehicles also have a speed compensation so that if there's vehicle noise when you're traveling faster, the radio will turn up and down to compensate for that noise. And this other one here is occupancy mode. You can select whether there's just a driver in the vehicle or whether there's someone in all the seats. Next we'll do the clock. My clock is actually set wrong, so we will set this. I'm gonna go back to 1634, that's the correct time. You just use the buttons, pretty straightforward. You can select between 12 hour or 24 hour mode, whichever you want. I prefer 24 hour mode. We'll go back, the next one is your Bluetooth, which we already went through. Uh, this will just allow you to pair with any mobile devices that you have. You can change the name that your mobile devices show. I have my truck named Ford Maverick. Uh, you can add devices, you can view the devices that are connected. If you have any questions about any of these things, there's information supplied. So you can open up the information box and that'll give you any other details that you're unsure about. The next one that we have is Ford Connect Pass. It allows you to set your vehicle as a hotspot for other wireless users in the vehicle. Your connectivity settings allow you to restrict and show who uses your Wi-Fi settings. We have general. So this is just a bunch of general settings for the truck, language, temperature, uh, whether you want your keypad to beep when you touch them. Uh, this is just some information about the truck and the audio software system that it has and whether or not it needs to be updated and uh, software licenses just the standard information saying what you're operating and you can reset all the factory settings to default or reset to all the default factory settings then we'll scroll over up top here we have 911 assist you can turn this on or off i have it on so if i'm in a crash the vehicle will automatically pair with my mobile device and call 911 and alert them to the incident uh, next up here, you can select to have automatic updates done for all the software systems in the Ford Maverick. Android Auto preferences. This is your preferences if you want to use Android Auto, which I do. So I'm going to turn that on. When my phone is paired, it'll allow Android Auto to operate, or I can remove my mobile device from the phone. The last two we have, three we have here, are vehicle settings. We have the rear view camera settings. Uh, if you turn this on, uh, I go back and this one here is the vehicle has the external entry keypad so you can type in a key number to access your vehicle and it tells you here exactly how to do it you just type in the code that was provided from the factory and then you enter in the new code you wish to use save it and you're good to go here there's a setting here for ambient lighting you can adjust your ambient lighting here and what this lighting actually controls 
is there is a light down here in this console in the nighttime it's extremely dark down here so by activating your ambient lighting setting to maximum this actually gives you just a nice amount of illumination down here so you can see what's in here so that's all the settings that are on your 8 inch center console touchscreen below that you have your basic radio settings you have your mute button volume button uh, this right here is a sleep button for your screen so if you press this it'll darken out your screen touch your touch screen anywhere you want to activate it again down below that are your heater controls there are no heater controls on the touch screen on this i actually prefer that when i'm driving i like to keep my eyes on the road and have physical contact with the buttons i find the touch screens can be a little bit iffy that way uh, down here some more of the technology by the right hand side you have your rotary dial shifter button my Tim Hortons coffee, you have your electronic park brake, you pull up to activate it and apply the brake, press down and turn it off, on and off. Right here, this is the road condition select button, so I'll push that and look at the dash. Right now I'm in normal operating mode. You have five settings you can scroll through right here, I'll just scroll through them. You can be in tow haul mode, slippery, economical mode, or sport mode. We'll go back down here. Right here we have the uh, traction control. Again in the dash it shows you that your traction control is off. I'll reactivate it by pushing that button. The traction control is on. The last button right here, this is a hold button they call it or a parking hold button if you have your gear shifter in drive with this button activated the vehicle won't roll ahead until you apply fuel or gas I was going to say gas until you apply the throttle which could be gas or electric in the hybrid but so if you're stopped at a drive through or at a light and you're not paying attention you remove your foot from the brake this will prevent your vehicle from moving until you actually apply pressure to the throttle down here. The next spot I'm gonna go over here is the steering wheel controls. Mine still has the sticker reminding me I have to get my wheels retorqued, which the dealer Avalon Ford does complimentary. I just have to swing into their courtesy bay and they'll do that uh, without an appointment. Uh, over here you have the cruise control. Basically it operates similar, same as any other cruise control. You just hit this button here, it turns it on. You push up to set the speed you want when you're at the desired speed level and you can increase or decrease your speed settings with this button right here. Uh, this will deactivate your cruise control. This will turn off your cruise control. Right here you have volume up and down for your interior voice speakers on the Ford system and as well a mute button. On this side over here you have your phone controls for to answer the phone, to hang up the phone, and as well as the voice prompts for the vehicle, you can press this to activate the voice prompts. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about are these controls right here. These control your information screen in the center of your dash and allow you to set it to your preference. So you can scroll up through the screens. You have your settings screen. You have your device or wireless screen, your radio, your speedometer, or your trip screen. Yeah, that's all of them. So that's your choices of screens you can have by scrolling up and down with this button right here. Each one of these screens has a menu setting. You press the menu setting here while you're in that screen, and we'll start with the setting screen. So in the setting screen, you press the menu button, then you press OK on each of these options, and it'll allow you to look at different things just for viewing the information. So then you have to go back each time. So this provides information about your key or administrative keys. You can view your tire pressure, oil reset, or your trailer settings, or back to your seatbelt screen. These screens, the seatbelt screen is available on your main dash, but the rest of them you have to actually enter into that information screen to see them. So we'll go back now, your display screen. This one here allows you to set the preferences that you choose, your language English, you can set your unit measure to liters per kilometers, 
or if you press that it gives you three choices I'm just pressing the OK button and the select buttons here so you can set your display to be liters per hundred kilometers kilometers per liter or miles per gallon I like mine on kilometers liters per hundred kilometers set your temperature you can set your tire pressure to oh, go back so you can set your temperature to Fahrenheit or Celsius you can set your tire pressure to PSI or kilopascals or barometric pressure we'll go back so down here we have driver assistance pre-collision assist which is a braking assist system or trailer sway control for your towing package you can activate these or deactivate them at your desire we go down to the vehicle settings so this is your lighting settings you can have automatic dim high beams you can set the delay for when you exit the vehicle how long your lighting will stay illuminated your door locks you can set the preferences when you hit your key fob if all the doors automatically unlock when you stop you can turn that on or off feedback for your key fob is audible if you hit your key fob and they don't lock it'll chirp and you'll have this so that your setting is for remote unlock with your external keypad or your key fob it'll either unlock all doors as I have it set or you can scroll down and select so that only the driver's door opens you have some settings for your remote start these are settings these are settings here so that when you use your remote starter your climate control can be set to your last setting or the car will automatically decide what settings they should be at you can automatically turn on or off your heated steering wheels so they're activated with your remote start and you can set the duration that your vehicle will run before shutting off after you use the remote starter your wipers have settings as well you can have a courtesy wipe when you press your mist button instead of automatically activating your windshield wash I find that quite useful actually uh, my key you can program uh, you'll have to read in the manual it's a little bit complicated but basically uh, create my key allows you to give certain uh, authorizations to a key you can set speed controls and the like so if you have a child driving your vehicle or one of your children or somebody you don't want to drive fast or a valet key you can set settings on the key that will limit certain operations of the vehicle we'll move on down to your trip here this is a very important setting here actually the vehicle only shows one trip if you're scrolling through the main screen but there are two available by pressing your menu button while showing your trip screen you can select what you want it to show or you can also program trip one and trip two separately so you can have different screen displays on each one but on your home screen your vehicle will only show one or the other which is a little bit weird actually you can reset all the values to factory defaults or you can configure the view this is very important and I've discovered it gives you a lot of information that most people are going to want to know if you press OK you have a choice of five things that you can display on your trip setting on your main screen you can use trip odometer trip timer your average fuel setting your distance to empty or your instantaneous fuel usage this one is one that I recommend you use absolutely because it'll give you a lot of information in regards to your gas usage versus your electric battery usage which I'll explain in just a minute so leave that one on the other four settings you have your choice of which ones you want to use so I'm gonna leave mine on trip one press OK then you can select here between a digital speedometer you can have EV coach there's a whole bunch of different settings there that'll basically just display what you see on your speedometer screen calm screen just means you turn it off next one is your radio settings you can control your radio over here the same as you can from your 8 inch touch screen right here touch screen is obviously better 
same thing he tells you your phone is connected and your power usage and we're back to the vehicle so that's it for the settings that you have control over on the dashboard down here on the left side you have uh, this is the dimmer switch for your lights in your dash this is your headlight settings you can have it on automatic always on just your park lights or turn them off i'd leave it in the automatic position right here this just shows it's your headlight switch this is your sorry this is your uh cargo lights in the back in your box bed and this here is the button for opening your fuel cap on the vehicle and then you have the standard window controls here your power locks but i'm going to do a quick rundown of your instrument cluster you have your speedometer here standard fuel gauge indicates that your fuel door is on the left side of the vehicle and right here you have your water temperature over here this is the gauge that's going to interest most people this is a very important gauge here so what this is is this tells you the battery usage in your vehicle i'm going to set my screen here back to my back to my trip screen so this gauge over here shows you the amount of battery usage if your needle is in the green you're running at 100 percent electricity which is what most people are going to aim for to save fuel when your gauge when your needle up here gets above zero then it tells you the percentage of your battery that's available that you're using so if you were to use a hundred percent of the battery power that's available your gauge would come all the way up here if you're using 50 percent of the available power it will be here and this will fluctuate depending on how much you apply the throttle but what everyone wants to know is how much fuel are you using in combination with your electricity and people have been complaining that there's no tachometer in the Ford Maverick that shows you your engine your gas engine RPMs which would obviously indicate how much fuel you're using well that problem actually has been taken care of by Ford well over here on this display here on my trip which I have set for my trip one screen it tells you your liters per hundred kilometers it tells you how far you have gone on that trip so your trip odometer it tells you your distance till empty for your gas and right here this screen here this is the one that I switched back in the menu that it showed you your instantaneous fuel gas usage so right now our gas usage is actually at zero the vehicle is operating at a 100% electric so when I start up the vehicle and start driving in a minute you're gonna see this change it's gonna go back and forth between electric and the amount of liters per hundred kilometers so obviously you want to try and drive your vehicle so that it stays in electric mode as much as possible and if not you'll see your gas going up and down your gas usage your liters per hundred kilometers so that actually gives you an extremely good idea of your gas usage versus the electrical usage of the vehicle and so every time your electric is on here this needle here will operate in the green so that confirms that your vehicle is operating electrically as soon as your needle goes above zero you'll see that you start to consume some fuel here and it will tell you exactly how much so i'm gonna start the vehicle up now we're gonna go for a little drive and uh, you'll see exactly how those two gauges there the fuel usage and the electric gauge electric usage gauge there in the needle how they correspond to each other so right now i'm driving 60 kilometers an hour i'm just cruising along the gauge is in the green here which indicates it's operating on electric as does your blue for your fuel indicator if I apply some pressure to the throttle you can suddenly see that I start consuming gas the more pressure I apply on the throttle the more gas I consume but even though it's using gas it's still done in conjunction with your hybrid battery so when I apply fuel this is showing that it's using right there it's about 10% of the available battery power that's not the charge that's left in your battery that's the amount of instant power that you have so right now we're going back to electric I'm easy on the throttle if I go hard on the throttle I'm to the floor my fuel consumption goes up as well as my battery power goes up so you can see how the throttle pressure directly corresponds to whether or not the vehicle operates in the electric mode or in the gas mode or a combination of both so ideally you want to drive the vehicle 
fairly easily, start off and accelerate slowly, and you should be able to keep it in electric mode for as much as possible. I'm just going to leave this play for a minute so you can uh, just see what it does just through normal driving here. most confusing part about this is understanding exactly what this side of the dial means. Again, that's not how much charge is left in your battery, it's how much of a instant draw there is on available power. So the battery has a certain amount of power stored in it. Up here it's drying full usage. Down here the lower you go the less power it's drying. So I'm back in the garage now, I just finished up the little drive there. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. And I'd just like to remind you again that if you think the content is worthy, please subscribe and hit your notification buttons because there will be some more updates coming on this truck in the very near future.